electric pink pitaya smoothie. Um, this is very similar to the smoothie that I made last week and the week before, only this time I put in the Wilderness Poets Dragon Fruit Powder, just like a teaspoon of it, to give it this a vibrant pink color. And then I also topped it with some fresh pitaya. Isn't this pretty? Somebody asked me what this tastes like, to be frank. <clears throat> It doesn't have much of a taste. It's a little bland. I'm sure if you get it fresh, like in the tropics and certain varieties are sweeter, but this is almost like, kind of like a cucumber in the bland level. It, it's tasty, but it doesn't have much flavor. It's more, I'm, I'm more consuming it for the color because <laughs> uh, it's pretty. But yeah, I just topped the smooth. There's a third of a banana in there and uh, then a little bit of, uh, uh, plant-based protein powder, and then some fresh almond milk from my soy bella that I made. Um, this is so easy, just a quarter of a cup of um, raw almonds, and boom, in like less than five minutes, you have fresh almond milk. You don't have to soak the almonds in advance. I do, supposedly that uh, just releases more, uh, makes them more nutritive. Um, you can do it either with soaking or without soaking, it doesn't really matter. Um, but anyways, yeah, so it tastes really good, comes together really easily. And, um, it separates a little bit, which is to be expected, but not too much. I mean, kind of just like boxed almond milk. Uh, oops, I topped it with, <laughs> I'm almost out of I'm almost out of cacao nibs here. I like to have these, and then I also put just a little bit of reduced fat, uh, uh, unsweetened coconut powder, uh, unsweetened coconut. Uh, that's the Let's Do Organic brand. All right, so update on the plants. I I've been fertilizing these guys, and I think it's doing something and helping them. The tomato looks good. It's got that one tomato, so far nobody else has sprouted up. But the one tomato I have, the $80 tomato, <laughs> is turning red, so that's promising. Unfortunately, we got a torrential rain dumping with heavy wind, and in a way, I guess it was kind of good. My eggplant suffered a little bit in that some of the leaves on the top were crushed, and so I removed them. But the plant itself actually looks kind of healthy, I think, because you see the little all the little spurtles, as I call them. I think new leaves are gonna sprout up. I mean, even there, since since the rain dumping and the breakage, that little nubbin down there has come up. So uh, I'm optimistic, but I don't think I'm gonna get eggplants out of these. That's okay. Well, hey guys, what's up? It is errand day, so I'm running out to the store as per Thursday routine. <laughs> um, I feel like I always have so much to update you guys on regard on Thursdays. The other days of the week, I mostly just talk at you. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, yeah, loving the soy bella for the almond milk. I finally gave that a whirl, and it's so easy. All you need is a quarter of a cup of almonds, and you get all that almond milk out of out of a quarter of a cup of almonds. It's about, about a liter of water. So, you know, that's equivalent to roughly what you get in the, in the boxed almond milk stuff. I'm rather enjoying it. I also got some raw sunflower seeds. I wanna try making sunflower seed milk. Oh, I did try the black bean milk. Remember I was talking about how apparently you could do that? Do not recommend. That was a fail. Um, it came out okay. It, like initially it looked all right, similar to how the soybean milk comes out. I mean, it was grayish but it came out looking like it was gonna be milky. But then when it came to room temperature, it just solidified and this gelatinous blech and wouldn't like pour out of the container. It was like jello, it was weird. It was like uh, uh, vegan gelatin. So yeah, don't recommend that. Uh, scratch that idea, but I've only done soy milk and almond milk thus far, but I wanna try sunflower seed milk in the soy bella recipe book the little book that came with the soy bella there's a recipe for what they call thanksgiving milk and it's like a blend of um, sunflower and what other kind of seed or not and then you put in like pumpkin pie spice cinnamon and you sweeten it with maple syrup i thought that sounded really good for the fall channeling fall vibes right now because it's steamy it's steamy so yeah, I it's so easy to make 
make the almond milk in there. I mean, it's, it's really fast. It's, there's this mill button that you press, and depending on how thick you want the almond milk, you can press it multiple times and it'll just keep milling the almonds in there. But uh, really easy. And I mentioned last week you have to clean the little canister after each use. It's much easier to clean when you do almond milk than when you do soy milk. There's less stuff that adheres to, to the little canister. So yeah, that's a little Soy Bella update and uh, really enjoying that stuff in my smoothies. I've really been getting into smoothie bowls. Uh, this time of year, it's so hot. You know, I kind of like to eat what feels like eating ice cream for breakfast. It's just a frozen smoothie bowl. So comment below if you guys would like to see a video of just like some of the smoothies that I've been jiving on lately. It's really been morning routine for me. So yeah, oh, book update. I am loving The uh, Reckoning by John Grisham. I mentioned I purchased that impulsively at Kroger last Friday and I started reading it on Saturday. And I don't, unfortunately, I don't have as much time to dedicate to leisure reading as I would like. I mean, I would, I would my idea of a vacation is just checking out and laying, like, laying low and reading and not talking, you know, not, not being bothered. Uh, that's my idea of a vacation. Uh, but I do make time to read, just not as much time as I'd like. Anyways, so I'm, I'm going along a little slowly. I'm about, I don't know, roughly, slightly, about a third of the way through. It's good. I really, I'm really enjoying it. If you like kind of a sort of gothic, southern gothic style of storytelling writing, you'll enjoy it. And you guys recommended Where the Crawdads Sing, so I'm on the wait list for that from the library. I'm not going to, I'm just going to wait and get it from the library. I don't think I'm going to purchase it. You know, I'm not a big book buyer. It sounds so bad. I mean, when I was a child, I'd ever heard myself say that. I was like, what? Um, but, you know, with, li you know, libraries, I, I never want libraries to go away, so I patronize them as much as possible. And... I never read that I rarely if ever read the same book twice and therefore I end up with just stuff that I'm holding on to collecting dust I do like the idea and this is what I'll do with, with this book of when you do buy a book you then donate it to someone else and in our neighborhood there's one of these little lending library things that I love it's like this little bird it looks like a bird feeder it's like a little box kind of cutesy like a house and you can take a book or leave a book I just love that I think it is so magical and I hope that kind of thing never goes away so that's what I plan to do with the reckoning one so actually my mom wants to read it so I will gift it to her but um, I can't remember the book that she just read that she was recommending I'll have to ask her this weekend she said it was really good and so yeah this little reading update what are you guys reading this summer? I love I love hearing from you all your book recommendations because I, do you ever get like um, kind of overloaded with choices and you don't know, you know, you, you get kind of, you draw a blank when it comes time to choose a book. Sometimes that happens with me. Like I can't just go to the library without an agenda, without like a shopping list. If I do, I mean, I'm going to be in there for hours and hours and hours. I just love being in there and I'll come out with way too many books and so I kind of overextend myself kind of like going to the grocery store hungry and walking down the cereal aisle I mean that's like a huge mistake that's kind of how how it is with me in the library so comment below some books that you guys are reading and, and loving I get, I get a lot of a lot of the books that I've read since starting this channel have been from viewer recommendations and they've they've been some solids that would not have known of other, you know, I would not have heard of otherwise. Um, so, thank you guys. Sharing the love. Oh, dear. Speaking of love, I am, um, oh, we had a bad thing last, I'm not a bad thing, I'm going to get um, You know how I am with my spinach from Costco, fresh and quick. This time of year, this happens, in the summertime in particular, they get heavy handed with the washing because that spinach is washed in advance. And I know that technically it's better if you wash your produce yourself rather than rely on on somebody else, you know, people handling your produce. Just 
water in terms of contamination risk. But anyways, um, I buy that. It's usually very good 99.9% .9 of the year. You see me buy it like pretty much every week. Well, I swear, three weeks around this time of year in the summer, they get heavy handed with the water on the washing and the bag is has has too much water to spinach ratio in it and the spinach gets soggy very quickly. That was the case this week and I ended up throwing the spinach into my slow cooker because um, I don't like eating soggy spinach raw. I mean, I, I don't think anybody does. Um, but it's okay in the slow cooker. It kind of, you know, hides all sin. So I don't know. I might not, I, I may not purchase it this week. Um, we shall see. Costco got in some more Felina uh, pajamas and these are little cute shorts. I'm tempted. Felina, they really are incredibly soft. And for the men folk, Costco also got these nice uh, Greg Norman collection shirts. I mean, they look nice. This seems like a nice brand. Kind of, this is like golf shirts, performance shirts. Moisture wicking, luxurious hand, wrinkle resistant. Costco got in some new books. The dinner list. I love Big Little Eyes. My mom just read uh, her more recent book, and she said it wasn't as good, uh, Nine Perfect Strangers. She said it wasn't as good as Moriarty typically delivers. Oh, I did not enjoy this book at all, The Nest. It's not good, in my opinion. I didn't like it. I think the main character just got on my nerves. <laughs> Is the Alice Network good? Well, this seems like it would be about nannies. You know, espionage, I guess. You see this advertised a fair amount. Ask again, yes. After a fever. All right, from Costco this week, I got a bag of riced cauliflower. And then I'm excited for these. They got these Pyrex baking dishes in, and they come with lids. So they're wonderful for storage. I have like the Pyrex bowls with the red lids on them that I store stuff in the fridge. But this is a great size for like carrots and things like that. So I got this, it was the two or 20 bucks. I didn't think that was too bad. Uh, and they are extra deep. And I mentioned the spinach has been a little off these past few weeks. So I got the Earthbound Farms Power Greens instead. My mom gets these and they're really good. They almost have like a, kind of peppery undertaste. I think it is the shard perhaps. And then I got these beautiful artichokes. Um, you can prepare these in the Kosari pressure cooker or you know whatever pressure cooker you may have. You just trim the stems off and put them in the pressure cooker and they cook really quickly and they're very nice. So I had to take advantage of these be beautiful artichokes they had at Costco this week. Um, and so hopefully they taste good. And of course I got radishes for my air fryer. And I picked up some tofu shirataki noodles. I love these. I typically purchase these on iHerb because they're a much better value, but I'm out. And so I need to order some more. So I went ahead and got some at Kroger. You either like these or you don't. <laughs> I happen to love them though. And uh, they're just made out of like uh, glucomannan konjac con flour. And uh, they, they, I don't know, they, they don't taste like pasta. They taste more like a ramen noodle if you put them into soups. Particularly with tofu, it's quite good. All right, and I got another one of these um, candy melons from Costco. These are really good. Uh, they're like a honeydew melon, but they're very juicy. Delicious candy, they're quite good. Three white onions, a bag of iceberg carrot red cabbage salad mix. Um, and then I got two more patayas since I'm on that kick. I got some parsnips. They have been really good lately. They've been really kind of sweet and, and nice. So I've been enjoying those. I got some cucumbers as well and hallelujah, Kroger removed those. Well, actually they still have the spiny chayote, but they got in the smooth chayote just for me. So I got more chayote squash this week. Two heads of Savoy. Then I got a can of no salt added tomato sauce. That's always convenient to have. And I also got a can of no salt added mushroom stones. These are, these were like 
on sale at Kroger. They were really cheap, like 10 cents or something. They're convenient to throw into the no salt added tomato sauce and make just like a quick pasta sauce with tofu and shirataki noodles. Anyways, um, I also got these meal prep containers from Kroger. They were on sale at a really good price. I enjoy using these to freeze things and the ones that I have have grown legs and walked away and so I need to replace them and I got some more of them. They hold four cups, which is a nice amount. And then these are on Ibotta now, you guys, FYI. Ibotta is one of the uh, cashback <laughs> rebate systems that I use where basically you can get cash back on grocery purchases and they have different items each week. And this is on Ibotta currently. And so I love the watermelon flavor. The strawberry flavor is pretty good. And I've got to try the mixed berry before they go away because I have a feeling it's going to be a limited edition thing. And of course, they're on Ibotta, so I have to take advantage of that. Also on Ibotta is the, are these no cow bars. I have always wanted to try these. I can't imagine that this is going to be something I'm going to really enjoy eating on a regular basis. I'm not really a big fan of like protein bars. But I do get cur protein bar curious and I want to try them. And these are vegan. So I thought I would try this lemon meringue pie bar flavor. They also have a peanut butter chocolate chip and then a chocolate kind of brownie one. Uh, but I think it's like pea protein and I don't know. We'll see. And you guys know I love these Dentex. They're also on, I have a coupon. I had a coupon for these through Kroger. Uh, yeah, if you shop at Kroger or I guess Meyer, depending on where you're at, definitely use the the app because they have a ton of coupons in the app that you load to your card and it's like, I'm always impressed with how much money I save each week on those little coupons. Um, but not money saving is my candle buying habit. I'm out of candles currently and so I got the Tuscany Candle farmhouse collection garden herbs. I rather enjoyed the last farmhouse collection candle that I had. This is their soy blend and garden herbs smelled really nice. So I thought I would go with that. If I look a little shiny, it's because I just applied before showing you my grocery haul. I just applied the um, uh, Garnier Ombrelle Visage Face SPF 60 that a nice viewer from Canada sent me. So that's what I've got on my face currently. But. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the vlog. I'm going to put my groceries away and go to the gym. Uh, but if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.